Here are some more some more organic pass method questions. Uh, so we've got we've got uh, this is not really organic, um, not organic. So let's let's try and do this question. He's saying identify two other products of the reaction with with calcium carbonate. So this molecule over here, this one, uh, this one is a carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acids will react with, like any carboxylic acid would react with, uh, it's going to react with calcium carbonate, CaCO3, and it's going to produce a salt and a water molecule. The salt would be uh, Calcium ions are going to displace, and this is going to be two twice, and plus water plus carbon dioxide. So the other two products are going to be water and and carbon dioxide. Uh, then you have this reaction scheme. Uh, two possible methods of making lactic acid are shown. So you have an aldehyde, and that aldehyde turns into a cyanohydrin. So it's this reaction over here that you have an aldehyde or a ketone and the serial bond o over here turns into COHCN so that's nucleophilic addition HCN and NACN would be needed for this HCN is the reagent and NACN is is the catalyst and then you have this reaction three. What is happening over here is that this carbon over here, the secondary alcohol, this is this over here is a secondary alcohol. Why is it a secondary alcohol? Because uh, it's bonded to two carbon chains. So secondary alcohol is turning into the same carbon is turning into a ketone. Uh, I mean, it's turning into a ketone and you've got a primary alcohol as well. So the primary alcohol is turning into a carboxylic acid. So that turns into, so there are two things happening. There's a secondary alcohol, there's a primary alcohol. So what happens to secondary alcohols? Uh, secondary alcohols, when they get oxidized by KMnO4 or K2Cr27, they turn into a ketone. You've got a primary alcohol and if you react it with or oxidize it, it turns into, into an aldehyde first and then it gets further oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So, so this is basically oxidation that is taking place and it's K2Cr2O7 acidified and reflux. So primary alcohols, they turn into uh, carboxylic acids, secondary alcohols, they turn into ketones. And finally, what happens is both of these things they turn into this molecule. Uh, so over here, this ketone turns back into an alcohol. So how do you turn a ketone back into an alcohol? The way you do that is reduction. So a ketone can be turned back into an alcohol. Uh, and for that, you're going to use NaBH4. Uh, that, is why you, that is going to be your reducing agent. So this over here is the, is the reducing. agent. Uh, and you're going to use NABH4, not LILH4, because LILH4 can also reduce a carboxylic acid. Because if you look at the structure over here, the carboxylic acid is not getting reduced. Only the ketone is getting reduced. So this is going to be NABH4, and that's going to be reduction. And what else? Over here, uh, uh, the CN turns into, I mean, over here in, in reaction number two, the CN turns into COH. So how does that happen? Uh, nitrile CN turns into carboxylic acid by hydrolysis, by acid hydrolysis, H2SO4 plus reflux. So this one would be, would be acid hydrolysis, which is H2SO4 and reflux. Is this clear? Is the whole whole uh, sequence clear? Yes or no? Is this clear? Tanya, clear? Oswa, sign. Yes, sir. 
Okay, so the next part, name the type of reaction. We in reaction number two, I think we did that. Uh, hydrolysis. Uh, reaction number four uses identify the that's a reducing that's a reducing agent. So we did that. Uh, what is meant by the term chiral center? So uh, it means that uh, uh, two non-superimposable. Uh, it's a carbon that's sp3 hybridized, and it's bonded to four different groups. and has two non-superimposable mirror images. Non-superimposable mirror, mirrored versions. Why? Because it has no line or plane of symmetry. So anyways, I, I just wrote, uh, uh, it's just a one mark question. So I'll just uh, quickly have a look. What's the, what's the one mark exactly for in this case? No, we wrote a much bigger answer. So what's the, what's the one mark? So it has a carbon atom attached to four different groups. I mean, that would have gotten one mark. Or it has no plane or line of symmetry, has non-superimposable images or mirrored versions. We wrote mirrored versions, that's fine as well. So we pretty much wrote everything. So that gets a, gets our one, that, that gives us one mark. This one is a cyclohexane as a colorless liquid used in industry to produce synthetic fibers. A reaction scheme involving cyclohexane is shown. So it's a cyclohexane and you've got a CL in it. Reaction one puts a CL. So one of the hydrogens over here, remember the cyclohexane has all these hydrogen atoms attached. All of them are hydrogen atoms. So these are all. So one of the hydrogen got substituted by CL. So that is a free radical substitution. That's this part. Alkane or alkyl chain. If the hydrogen gets substituted, you get a halogen or alkane and that's UV light and CL2. So that's the reaction sequence. So it's Cl2 plus UV light. And then you have a halogenoalkane. That halogenoalkane turns into an alkene. So how does that happen? How does a halogenoalkane go to an alkene? That's NaOH, KOH, ethanolic, concentrated, uh, plus heat. Uh, that if you have a halogenoalkane, the Cl is going to be knocked out and the H from the neighboring carbon would be knocked out. So it's concentrated ethanolic NOH or NOH that is ethanolic plus it's going to be heat and state the essential condition required for reaction one we did that Cl2 plus UV light complete the table to give the mechanism of reaction one so name the step the first step is known as initiation so this is about the free radical mechanism which is this one. Like when you have a free radical mechanism, the first step is initiation where free radicals are produced. Uh, because of the UV light, the CL bond breaks homolytically and it breaks into two pieces, CL radicals are produced. So that's step one. And then you have propagation. The propagation step is that the CL radical is really reactive. So it starts stealing hydrogen atoms from the, from the carbon molecule and uh, from the hydrocarbon and which turns it into a radical uh, because its H is gone. So its bonds are incomplete now. So this is what's, what's happening here. The CL radical comes in, steals a hydrogen atom that was bonded to. So what it does is it steals one of the hydrogen atoms. So it ends up forming HCl and the bonds of that carbon atom are no longer complete. And then this radical then attacks a Cl2 molecule and it does exactly the same thing. So this one is also part of the propagation step. So propagation had two steps uh, that the CSC radical is produced. Its bonds are incomplete. So it attacks one of the Cl2 molecules, takes away one of the Cl's. 
bonds with it and the CL radical is formed again. And the last one is termination. In termination, two random radicals would just join up. This one has incomplete bonds. This one has incomplete bonds. So they're going to just join up. And the CL is going to get attached over here. So name the type of reaction that occurs in reaction two. So that is uh, elimination. This one over here is elimination. And then you have... Uh, so the product reaction to a cyclohexene, cyclohexene can be converted into a dipic acid, uh, which is this one. Identify the reagents and conditions. So, so this is what he's talking about. He's talking about this molecule. And he's saying that it turns into a straight chain molecule. And the only way that's possible is that the double bond breaks. Only then a cyclohexene, which they've given over here, this thing, cyclohexene. Only if the double bond breaks would the molecule turn into a straight chain. I mean, the chain would open up. Now, the, that's the only way that's possible that the chain opens up. And uh, so when, that, when can that happen? That can happen if the double bond is strongly oxidized. The double bond would break up. And if the carbon in the double bond had no carbon chains, it, it will turn into carbon dioxide. If it's got one carbon chain, it will turn into a carboxylic acid. And if it's got two carbon chains, it's going to turn into a ketone. So this one over here, the molecule will break at this point. And so I'll, I'll break the double bond. And the two carbon atoms, only one carbon chain attached with this, so it will turn into a carboxylic acid. This one as well, only one carbon chain attached to it, so it will turn into a carboxylic acid. So, so it's basically carboxylic acids at both ends, carboxylic acid, CH2, 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 then another carboxylic acid. So it's exactly the same molecule that's forming. So how do you do that? It's, uh, it's hot, concentrated, acidified. and acidified KMnO4, that's what is required for that. TK, is that clear? Yes, sir. And then you then you have a question on infrared spectra of cyclohexene and adipic acid. So I'll just, I'll just write the straighter version of this adipic acid. Uh, the four CH2s in the middle, and a carboxylic acid group on both sides. So you think, suggest three main differences between the infrared spectral cyclohexene and adipic acid. Cyclohexene is this one. It's, a, it's just a double bond here. I say anyways, you'll open the data booklet and uh, you look at the infrared spectra. So infrared spectra is different bonds would vibrate at different frequencies. And whenever you look at the infrared spectra, make sure focus on these bonds first, acetyl bond O and OH. So it's got an OH in the carboxylic acid range and it's got a acetyl. So there's going to be a strong absorption in the 1600, 1700 range. And there's going to be a strong and very broad absorption because of the OH bond vibrating in the 2500, 3000 wave number. So the difference would be this molecule, the two main differences. So strong absorption uh, in the 1600, I mean, you can be more specific. This is a carboxylic acid bond O. Uh, so 1600, 1700 range, wave number. And you're also, so that is because of cetyl bond O. And then you'll have the OH absorption because of the carboxylic acid OH. There's going to be a strong and broad absorption. Uh, in the 2500, 3000 range, which is written over here. Uh, 20, 3, 2500 strong, and it's a carboxylic acid which Then it has another bond, which is C single bond O. So there's going to be a strong absorption in the 1,040 and 1,300 range. 
So you got a, you got a C single O as well. So there's going to be a uh, a strong absorption in the whatever the range was, one thousand to thirteen hundred. This cyclohexene is not going to have any of those. So those are your three differences. Uh, so I'll just check the three differences. So he gave us the uh, OH one, 2,500, 3,000. Then he gave us the 1,000, the CO, the Cetyl bond O. So any three. So I think we wrote these three. Is that clear? Just remember that okay, infrared spectra, you get very easy questions on that. Is this clear? Tanya, is this clear, Saim, Oswa? Yes, sir. I said then, um, I said that's it for this one. Uh, let's do another theory one. And let's open let's try and do this one. So I've opened the marking scheme. So this question, not sure if we, I think we have done this, just hold on a second. No, let's try and, and do this one. Uh, so this is one organic question there. They're asking us, uh, HIV reacts with propane to form a mixture of hydropropane. Identify uh, which one is the major product. So the major, and explain your answer. So the major product is simply, uh, like if you look at this molecule, if you remember the Markovnikov's rule, that is that when you have a reaction, the H, and this is with HI, uh, the reaction is with HI. So the H likes to bond with the, with the carbon that is already bonded with more H atoms and the I would go with the other one. So that's the Markovnikov's rule. So this is going to be one, two idopropane is going to be your major product. This is two idopropane, that's your, that's your major product. And they're asking for the explanation as well. Now, the simple one mark explanation for this is that two degree carbocations are going to be more are going to be more stable. Or carbon because they have more electron rating alkyl chains. Now, this explanation is also given in the in the notes I've sent you that why do you have a major product? And that's the reason that according to the reaction scheme, when you have a, when you have an asymmetric alkene, uh, the H has two options. It can either steal the electrons from a double bond and bond with this one, or it could bond with this one. Carbocations, which are formed, which are kind of in the middle of the chain, they're more stable. Uh, this is the second degree carbocation because, or a secondary carbocation. Why? Because it's got two carbon chains attached. This positive charge is going to be smaller. So carb carbocation, this one has more electron rating alkyl chains. And so it's got electrons on this side. It's got a large group on this side. So the positive charge over here is surrounded by electrons on both sides. And it's going to pull some of those electrons towards itself and its positive charge would be lesser. Uh, this carbocation is, uh, it's easier to form because the H can steal electrons from it. 
This one has a much higher positive charge. So the H over here cannot steal electrons from it. So it's a lot harder to form this carbocation compared to that one. So because it has a lower charge density. So this is what your explanation should be. That you're going to write that two degree carbocations are more stable. Why? Because they have got more electron rating alkyl chains. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And he's looking for the reaction mechanism, curly arrow. So the reaction mechanism is also, uh, I mean, it's given over here. It's this one that when you have a reaction with HPR, uh, the electrons from the double bond, they get attracted to the positive H. And the BR electrons, because of the electrons in the double bond, they get repelled. So that is your, that is your first step. So the electrons over here are going to be attracted to the positive H, whereas the electrons in the double bond are going to be they are going to be repelled. And the double bond electrons are going to get stolen by the H, which is, and where does the H like to bond with it? It's going to like to bond with the carbon that's already bonded to more H's. And a carbocation is going to be formed. And in the next step, the I minus one is going to return with its electrons and addition would be completed. So you've got three H's with this one, you've got a CH3. And now you've got an iodine as well. So that's the mechanism of that particular reaction. And uh, then you have this organic question, it's compound T, it's an, it's an alkene, you have to name this. So how would you how would you name this? It's uh, what's this? What's the longest chain? That's one, two, three, and four. So that's four. That's but. This is the first carbon atom. Two, three, and four. The double bond is on the second one, so it's but two, in, and then they are carbon branches. One carbon branch and another one carbon branch on the second and third. So that's one carbon branch is methane. So there's a methyl branch on the second one and on the third one. So it's two, three, dimethyl butu, butuene. And then he's asking for the skeletal formula of an isomer of T that shows cistron. So, so you've got to make an isomer of T that shows cistron. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. So I have to make an alkene that shows cistrons for cistrons, two different groups on both sides. So six carbon atoms, that would mean, like if I even put them in a, in a line, straight line, three and three, that's six, and put a double bond over here, there would be two different groups on the carbon in the double bond. I mean, there are lots of options. Uh, this is one of them. Not sure if there is any, but, uh, two different groups attached to this carbon atom in the double bond and two different groups attached to this one, but they were looking for the skeletal formula. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And there's a double bond at this position. So is, is this clear? Yes, sir. So this one is going to form geometric isomers. Now each carbon atom in D forms a sigma bond uh, to at least one other carbon atom as shown. Fine. On the diagram, draw the orbitals present in the pi bond. So whenever you have, whenever you have a double bond like this, what is happening? There's a double bond in the middle. So you just have to show the pi bond. So there's going to be an overlapping of orbitals above and below. And you can shade this like the orbitals have have overlapped and state the hybridization of the two carbon atoms. So whenever carbon is bonded to or making a double bond, that's sp2 hybridized. So it's sp2 hybridized carbon atom. And then you have a reaction sequences given 
a diol is formed. You have got, you've got a double bond and a diol is formed. So how how is a diol formed? Uh, it's mild oxidation. Like if you if Co you do diol um take this potassium. one right? yeah came in a four right potassium yeah. magnet. So that is cold dilute came in a four, and uh, the double bond would go away, and uh, it's like an addition reaction. And OH groups will get added. So that's cold dilute came in a four. I'm just going to check whether they write alkaline as well or not. Where's the, where's the one second? I mean, it is alkaline, but do they give marks for alkaline came in a four? So it's a uh, no, not alkaline. It's just cold dilute, and they're using acidified. And what's happening in reaction number two? Uh, that's kind of strange because uh, all of a sudden the OH goes away, and the other one turns into a double bond O. So we haven't done any reaction where the OH disappears all of a sudden and turns into it turns into a carbon chain. So no reactions similar to that have been done. So stay and explain how two four DNA. So then they're not actually asking for reaction number two. What they're asking is how would 24 dh can be used to detect the presence of V as a product of reaction number two. So V. So how is 24 DNPH able to do that? Because 24 DNPH is a test for aldehyde as well as ketones. Uh, so, so it's a test that gives an orange precipitate. This is 24 DNPH. For both aldehydes and ketones, it's going to give you an orange precipitate. Uh, so that is two four. Where's the question paper? That's that's what two four DNPH does. To get clear, that's that's how you're going to be able to distinguish. You're, you're going to get an orange precipitate here, not an orange precipitate in this case. Tani, is this clear, Oswa? Same. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and then you have another infrared spectrum, which is that uh, the progress of reaction two can be. I said reaction number two can be. Monitored by inf uh, the absorption caused by the OH bonds is always present because water is used as a solvent. So water is solvent, so water has OH bonds as well. So he's saying that is cannot be able able to distinguish. You won't be able to distinguish this. Identify two absorptions and the bonds responsible for these whose appearance will change significantly during the reaction. So the progress of the reaction too can be monitored. This one, right? So two bonds one is serial bond o would be forming so initially there would be no this i mean there would be this molecule so initially there would be no absorption with the data booklet uh, this one so initially there wouldn't be any serial bond o absorption in the 1600 range uh, or we can be very specific 1670-1740 but then there's going to be an absorption and that so initially so gradually there's going to be an absorption in the whatever that range was. I mean, you can just quote the quote the values. So this bond over here is going to give you that absorption. Uh, the OH can't be used because they're saying water is a solvent, water also has OH, so that will not change. But there's a C single bond O. C single bond O also has an absorption in the 1040, 1300 range, that absorption will disappear. So this absorption over here, as the reaction proceeds, I mean, this absorption would start to appear as this molecule is, this molecule is formed, while this absorption would slowly gradually disappear. It, this is somewhere in the 1000 to 1300 wave number. So it will gradually, it will gradually disappear. Is that part clear? That as this molecule turns into this molecule, this, this absorption would appear and this absorption would disappear. So yeah, is this clear? Yes, sir. 
and we can have a look at the so it's it's talking about the same ones the two absorptions over here and then what else do we have in this question we've got uh stain explain how 240 and ph can be used to detect the presence of v we already did that we did this part as well we're on this part now uh some reactions of v are shown so alkaline aqueous iodine what is, that's the iodoform so that's so that's the iodoform test which is what is the iodoform test it's somewhere down here it's uh it's a test for two structures, uh, these two specifically. It's either methyl with acetyl bond O or methyl with CHOH. The methyl group breaks away, forms CHI3, and the rest of the molecule, the, this carbon over here, turns into a carboxylic acid salt because of the alkaline conditions. And uh, so, so this molecule over here is a methyl. This is CH3. This is C. And there's going to be three H's with this. So it's a methyl with a with a ketone. So what will happen is when you do the iodoform test, the methyl will break away and it will form CHI3 yellow precipitate. So that is going to be formed. And this carbon over here will turn into a salt of the carboxylic acids. This is exactly what's happening here. Okay, is that part clear? Clear, Sai Moswa, uh, Dania. Oh, is this clear? I said, and you've got NABH4. That's that's a ketone that is undergoing reduction. It turns into a secondary alcohol. So how does how does a ketone turn into into a secondary alcohol? Ketone, it's uh, either NABH4, LNH4, and it turns back into a it started off with a secondary alcohol. It was formed when during oxidation, and it's going to turn back into into a carboxylic acid. Uh, sorry, into a into an alcohol back again. So over here, it's I mean this thing is turning back into an alcohol. So that's NaBH4. That's reduction. Not sure why they're stating everything. And then this alcohol turns into an alkene. It's dehydration. When dehydration happens. Uh, H is lost from the neighboring carbon atom, OH is lost, H is lost, and they end up forming a water molecule as well. So they end up forming water molecules, and then there's addition polymerization. So, so they'll somewhere down the line, actually, let's one by one answer the question what would you observe in reaction three? Uh, so, reaction three is yellow precipitate, that's, that's the observation. And then you have uh, identify what uh, which of the reactants is reduced in the reaction. In reaction number three, no, what's the question? Identify which of the reactants is reduced in this reaction. So which of the reactants? Iodine that's undergoing reduction. Iodine had an oxidation state of zero, and now iodine is minus one. So that is reduction. So. So in iodoform tests, it's iodine that got that got reduced, and then say use H in the equation to represent an atom uh, of and construct an equation for reaction number four. So reaction number four, what was the equation? This is C with three CH three. So I'm going to so it's three CH threes, and you got a C, and then you have a CO. And right next door, there's another CH3. So this is the structural formula of this. There's a carbon with CH3, 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 another carbon with O, and then you have a CH3. This turns into this molecule. So what is that carbon with three CH3 groups? So it's carbon with three. Then there's another carbon with OH, and it's CHOH. And then you have CH3. So what has happened is two hydrogens have gotten added. If you look at the total number of, uh, if you look at the total number of uh, atoms, the main difference is that this one has two hydrogens, the two hydrogens that have been added in this molecule. So they said, okay, use, 
use H to represent the NABH4 molecule. So we did, we just did that, and that's going to be your equation. And then you have, a, it's a mixture of two optical isomers, and you have to draw the two optical isomers. So X, what is X? X is this one, and I think it's this carbon that's the optical isomer because uh, uh, it's bonded to four different groups. So you've got, you have to draw those two optical isomers. So that's one version. What's going on? It's got an OH, a CHT. So it's got an OH, a CHT, and then there's another C with three CSTs. And then there's going to be an H as well. And the other version is going to be a mirrored version of the same thing, which is So it's going to have an OH and the H would be pointing in this direction. And then there's going to be CH3. And over here, there's going to be C with three, with three CH3s. Both optical isomers of X can be dehydrated to form a single product Why give the reagent and conditions required for we. So what is the, what is the reagent for dehydration? How do you remove a water molecule from an alcohol that is also given? You just use, uh, you have an alcohol dehydration is Al2O3 plus heat or concentrated H2SO4 plus heat. Uh, over here, we should also add SiO2. So let me just hold on a second. So, So SiO2 can also be added as a reagent in this case. And let's try and finish this paper. It's, uh, and draw one repeat unit of the polymer. So I'm gonna do the polymer over here. It's a double bond. Make sure you don't draw anything on the right and left side of the double bond. So you, you got a double bond and there's a carbon chain over here on this side. So I'm gonna make the carbon chain point in this direction and it's gonna have three CST groups. And the rest would be H atoms. This one would have H, H and H. So when it forms a polymer, the double bond would break in the middle and you'll have linkages formed. The same thing would repeat over and over again. So make sure, make the double bond in the middle over here and make sure you don't draw anything on the right or left side. So a polymer is going to be formed. It's going to look like this. And draw one repeat unit. We just did that and does not proceed quickly at room temperature. So just why this is the case. So reaction number six. Um, so why does it, it, I mean, there's no reason for that. So I think I'm, I'm assuming, uh, there's no specific reason for that. Probably not even in your course. So the only prob probable reason for that might be that, uh, it has a high actuation energy. So I can check the last part. Yes. That is the only probable cause or reason for that. So let's, we, we, we're kind of done with this one, so we will uh, try and attempt other questions next time. So, okay, everyone. Thank you, sir. Okay, take care.